humbly and gratefully, I stand before you, grateful for patriots such as you, humbled by the magnitude of the task before us. I speak to you as a fellow citizen of the United States of America, deeply concerned about the welfare of our beloved country. I am not here to tickle your ears, to entertain you. I will talk to you frankly and honestly. The message I bring is not a happy one, but it is the truth. And time is always on the side of truth. As the German philosopher Goethe said, truth must be repeated again and again because error is constantly being preached round about. I realize that the bearer of bad news is always unpopular. Those who will learn nothing from history are condemned to repeat it. This we are doing in the Americas today. George Washington stated, truth will ultimately prevail where there are pains taken to bring it to light. To bring the truth to light is our challenge, this day and every day. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. With the crass unconstitutional usurpation of power by the executive branch of the federal government, anti-spiritual decisions of the Supreme Court, all apparently approved by a weakly submissive rubber stamp Congress, the days ahead are ominously frightening. Surely, certainly, it behooves patriotic citizens such as you to meet together to seriously consider present conditions in our beloved nation. It is imperative that American citizens become alerted and informed regarding the threat to our welfare, happiness, and freedom. All we hold dear as a great Christian nation is at stake. Wherever possible, I have tried to speak out. It is for this very reason that certain people in Washington have bitterly criticized me. They don't want people to hear the message. It embarrasses them. The things which are destroying the Constitution are the things they have been voting for. They are afraid of their political careers if these facts are pointed out. They therefore try to silence any who carry the message. So from the very beginning of this Moscow campaign to stop the anti-communist movement in this country, it was an important part of the communist strategy to get their liberal American friends to carry out an attack against patriotic organizations. Of course, the communists have learned not to attack all patriotic groups at once. Their strategy is to focus on just one organization and make it so detestable and ugly in the public mind that they can hold it up as a sort of tar baby and then use it to smear all other individuals or groups in the same category. The fight to save the Constitution is not mere controversy nor the fight against communism. In fact, it is a war with the devil, Christ versus Antichrist, and I am willing to fight. It is a fight against the greatest evil in this world, a ruthless, powerful, godless conspiracy. I think it is time for every patriotic American to join with neighbors to study the Constitution and the conspiracy and then prepare to do some independent thinking. And remember that the organized who have a plan and are dedicated, though they be few, will always defeat the many who are not organized and who lack plans and dedication. The communists know this and have proven it. Isn't it about time that most Americans realize it too? In conclusion, may I say that one of our most serious problems is the inferiority complex which people feel when they are not informed and organized. They dare not make a decision on these vital issues. They let other people think for them. They stumble around in the middle of the road trying to avoid being controversial and get hit by traffic going both ways. To the patriots, I say this. Take the long eternal look. 
stand up for, for freedom, no matter what the cost. It can help to save your soul and maybe your country. Blessed by the Almighty, our forefathers have made and kept it so. It will continue to be a land of freedom and liberty as long as we are able to advance in the light of sound and enduring principles of right. To sacrifice such principles for momentary expediency, often selfishly motivated, is to endanger our noble heritage and is unworthy of this great American people. With all my heart, I love this great nation. I have lived and traveled abroad just enough to make me appreciate rather fully what we have here. To me, this is not just another nation. It is not just one of the family of nations. This is a nation with a great mission to perform for the benefit of liberty-loving people everywhere. It is my firm conviction that the constitution of this land was established by men whom the God of heaven raised up unto that very purpose. This is part of my religious faith. The days ahead are sobering and challenging and will demand the faith, prayers, and loyalty of every American. As the ancient apostle declared, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. May God give us the wisdom to recognize the dangers, the dangers of complacency, the threat to our freedom, and the strength to meet this danger courageously. Our challenge is to keep America strong and free, strong socially, strong economically, and above all, strong spiritually, if our way of life is to endure. There is no other way. Only in this course is there safety for our nation. In this mighty struggle, each of you has a part. Every person on the earth today chose the right side during the war in heaven. Be on the right side now. Stand up and be counted. If you get discouraged, remember the words of Edward Everett Hale when he said, I am only one, but I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, that I ought to do. And what I ought to do, by the grace of God, I shall. This is my prayer for you this day. May God bless all of you, each and every one. Thank you very much.